Hello, and welcome to my little fountain pen collection tour. Some people have asked me about the fountain pens that I use in my spreads, and also just have asked me general questions about getting started with fountain pens, so I thought that maybe it would be a good idea to show you guys my little collection and also give you some recommendations based off of my experience with all of these pens. You may notice me making gestures in the video, that's because I originally filmed this talking while I was filming, but I got a little too rambly, so today we're going to do a little bit of a voiceover kind of thing. As for logistics, I am going to show you guys all of the pens that I have accumulated over the years. I have not gotten all of these pens at once, they've been collected slowly over the years. I'm going to list them from cheapest to most expensive, but all of the pens that I own I bought for 30 US dollars or less. So these are actually quite affordable for fountain pens. I will also mention the nib size, where I got it, when I got it, as well as whatever ink I have in there. Just so you guys know, most of these pens will come with one cartridge of ink at purchase that you just pop into the pen and you can get going right then and there, but some of them don't. I will be putting non-affiliate jet pens links in the description box in case you guys are interested in picking up one of these for yourself. Again, non-affiliate codes, uh, <laughs> I wish I had like a partnership with jet pens, but I don't. Just some other last minute disclaimers, don't be like me and own this many fountain pens. I obviously do not have a need for all of these fountain pens and I don't use all of them all the time. Additionally, fountain pens are, in my opinion, absolutely unnecessary, especially if you're just using them for journaling. I think that any pen will do, any pencil will do. In fact, if you like to write on a computer instead, you know, type up your feelings, that works too. Fountain pens are absolutely unnecessary, but if you're interested, then this video might help you out. But without further ado, why don't we just get started? So here is the Pilot Petite fountain pen. It is true to its name, it's very petite. I have it in a fine nib. I got it from a local store a few months ago. It retailed for about three US dollars. I currently have the navy blue ink cartridge that came with the pen in the pen. It is a little too small for me. Even when it's posted, it is still smaller than my hand. I have pretty big hands, so I tend to like longer pens, but it's not too much of an issue for me. The only big issues that keep me from using this consistently is that it's sometimes hard to start when you're writing and very inconsistent, so it'll stop writing in the middle of a word or at the beginning of a word, and that's really frustrating for me, so I tend not to use it. The next pen is a Platinum Preppy, which I currently have in a medium nib, but I've actually had all of the sizes of the Platinum Preppy, and my favorite size is the fine nib. I started using the Platinum Preppy over two years ago, and I also bought this from a local store where it retailed for about five US dollars. And I currently have the Platinum Preppy black cartridge in it. And I really love this pen. I think this is the perfect starter pen because it is so affordable. It feels like any other fountain pen in my opinion. The plastic is a little cheap on the body, but if you're looking for the fountain pen experience to just see what it's like, I think that the Preppy is the best place to start. My only qualms with the Preppy is that the cartridges that work with it, the ink is definitely not dark enough, so I've tried both the black and the blue cartridges and I can never get them to be as opaque as I want them to be but that's a really small detail and my own personal preference otherwise I highly recommend the platinum preppy for fountain pen beginners the next pen is an Uli modern script fountain pen I don't know what nib size it is, I'm sure it said on the packaging, but I threw that away and it does not say on the nib. It was a Christmas present that I got last year, but I did look it up and you can get a pack of three of these pens for 14 US dollars. I currently have the black ink cartridge that it comes with 
um, inside of this pen right now. I don't really like this pen if I'm honest. It does its job. It, it is like a good fountain pen. It's very affordable as well. I think it's going to be really good for letters because it does have a larger sized nib. But again, it's a little low quality in terms of the plastic and I'm not a huge fan of the ink. So I don't reach for this one as much. It's definitely very aesthetic. The pack of three comes in a rose gold, gold, and silver body so that's kind of cool but otherwise i'm not really reaching for this very often the next pen is a pilot kakuno in a medium nib i got this one about two years ago at a local store and it retailed for about 15 usd but i think you can find it cheaper online i currently have monteverde canyon rust ink in it inside a converter this is my go-to pen for sure you probably have seen me using this the most i actually really like the pilot black ink cartridges that you can buy but I decided to use a converter because I ran out of the Pilot black inks. That's okay. Pilot is actually targeted for people who are starting out with fountain pens, so I'm sure I showed it in the video, but it has a little smiley face on the top of the nib, and that's supposed to help remind you that that's the part of the pen that goes upward, so you're always supposed to see the smiley face when you're writing. Additionally, it has a triangle grip, so a three-sided grip where your hand is supposed to go that is supposed to help you control the fountain pen better. It doesn't really work for me because I have a weird hand grip when I write, but I have heard that it does help people. Overall, this pen is just super quality and really great, so I highly recommend it if you're willing to splurge a little more on your very first fountain pen. The next pen is a Kaviko Perkeo in a fine nib. I got it very recently from Jet Pens. It was about 16 US dollars. I currently have the Kaviko dark blue ink cartridge in it. So this is the fancy all black Perkeo and that's like I would say 75% of the reason why I got it. The other 25% being that I really like my other Kaviko fountain pen and I wanted to try a Kaviko fountain pen in a finer nib, so I did get the fine nib on this one, and I really enjoy it. At first, I didn't notice too much of a difference between the fine nib and the medium nib between the two Kavikos, but after using it for a while, I am really enjoying the fine nib and how it is just slightly smaller. It's still really awesome quality. The barrel, it looks very simple, but again, it's really quality. It feels quite sturdy. And I really like the dark blue cartridge that came with the pen. The next pen is the Twispy Go, which I got in a fine nib, and I got it recently from Jet Pens, where it retailed for about 20 US dollars. I currently have my Monteverde green ink in it. So this one is probably my most disappointing fountain pen in that I paid so much money for it and it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be at all. It's very, very chunky. Chunky is the best word to describe this pen. The barrel is very thick, as you can see in comparison to the other pens that I have. And then also the nib is very thick. So I got a fine nib in the hopes that it would be about the same size as the Kaviko fine nib, but it actually is bigger than the medium nibs that I have on my other pens. So that was kind of frustrating. I wish I had known to get the extra fine nib to get the size that I wanted. Another downside to the Twisby Go is that to refill the pen, you have to stick the pen in a ink well and then use the piston to suck ink into the body well. Not only is that a really messy process, but you also have to buy a bottle of ink in order to use this pen. Like it just came with a pen, there was no ink included, there was no refill cartridge because you can't refill it with a cartridge. It's simply just refilling from an ink well. That's probably the biggest downside to this pen is that it might be affordable, but you do have to buy fountain pen ink in addition to this pen. So I don't know if I would recommend this for beginners, but if you end up liking fountain pens, but you like a bigger nib, bigger barrel, then this guy might be for you. 
The last pen that I have is the Kaviko Sport in a medium nib. I got it last year from an Australian vendor. This pen usually retails for about $25 in the US. However, I paid a lot more for that because the little silver clip because that doesn't originally come on the Kaviko Sport and then the pack that I got also came with an extra refill cartridge. I have that Kaviko blue refill cartridge in there currently. And even though I spent a little more than I originally intended on this pen, I love it so much. It is definitely my favorite fountain pen. I fell in love with it as soon as I started using it. It really changed my relationship with fountain pens. Like I think I started using fountain pens pretty much on the daily because of this pen. You might have some reservations because it looks small and it is small. It's a little bigger than the um, Pilot Petite, but it's not a regular full-size pen. But when it's posted, it doesn't feel too small in the hand. Again, I highly recommend it. It is a bit of a splurge, especially for a first timer, but if you are willing to go the distance and you would like a really high quality pen, I highly, highly, highly recommend the Kabiko Sport. That's all of my fountain pens. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was kind of fun to do. I liked making the swatches and everything. Stay tuned for a full stationery collection tour with some of my stationery favorites and recommendations. Otherwise, thank you guys once again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.